Okay, what we have here is a 2013 Fiat 500 Abarth with the turbo engine in it and have a small problem. When you shut the car off, there is a pump that is supposed to run and keep coolant to the turbo for a short period of time, less than a minute. Problem is that ever since I lost a battery, uh, the, the pump never comes on anymore. So, I took it to the dealer. Dealer can't find anything wrong with the pump. They can't tell me why the ECU is not turning the pump on. So, I'm going to make the pump come on every time I shut the car off and run for about a minute. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Alright. Zoom out a little bit. Right there is the, the coolant tank. And there is the pump. It's got lines that run to the turbo, which is right there. Now, it's controlled by a relay in the power control module, which is right here over next to the battery. And it's that relay, you can't see it very well, because it's kind of in the shadow right there. Okay? And that relay has a fuse associated with it, which is the 20 amp yellow one, the top one there. And it also has a 10 amp fuse that controls the red one that controls power to the relay. Okay, the whole idea behind this is the 10 amp fuse right there provides a plus 12 volts directly from the battery. It's not switched, it's on all the time and it goes to that relay. When the ECU feels that it wants the pump to turn on it sends a ground signal to the other contact of that relay which in turn closes the contact in the relay and through here, through this 20 amp fuse, provides power over to the pump, which is down there. Zoom out here. This is, this is the relay. I've taken it out of the power control module. And if you turn around, you see that I've bent one of the tabs over and soldered a wire to it. Just a basic wire. I'm going to plug it back in and I'll show you what I can do with that wire. By bending the tab the way I did, uh, the ground of the relay is no longer plugged into the, into the uh, power control module. And that is what the relay is looking for from the ECU. It's looking for a ground path. And for some reason, the ECU doesn't want to send that ground path. So what I'm going to do is hook up a couple of relays so that when I touch that wire to ground, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but that makes the pump run. And that's what I'm after. Okay, I wanted to be as inobtrusive as possible. In other words, I didn't want to have to cut into existing wiring and that kind of stuff to make this work, but I'm going to have to. I need a ignition on positive 12 volts. In other words, I only want the 12 volts to come on when the ignition's on. And the only source for that close to where I'm going to put all these relays is that orange wire right there, the big, the big heavy orange wire. So I'm going to splice into that. Like I said, I really didn't want to, but other than running a wire up underneath the dash or whatever, uh, this is the easiest place to get to. It wasn't really easy. I had to pull the battery in. As you can see, I pulled the, the uh, 
power distribution module apart but everything just kind of snaps in place and and so anyway I'm going to splice into that wire and I'll be back okay as you can see I've removed some of the insulation from that orange wire I did it very very carefully with a razor blade being careful not to cut any of the conductors now I'm going to take this wire here wrap it around the bare wire and then solder it and then I'll wrap it with some tape okay there's the uh, the wire wrapped around the, con the, uh, the orange conductor and the next step is solder there we go soldered solder all up wrap it with some tape and uh, we'll be good to go okay the whole secret to success on this project is these two relays this relay right here is just a standard automotive 12 volt relay but it has a normally open and a normally closed contact and what that means is that by using that orange wire out of the distribution box which is yellow now because I didn't have an orange wire when that comes on it picks up this relay and opens up the contact that's not that's not the important part the important part is when the car shuts off again and this relay closes that will put positive 12 volts on this relay over here which is an off delay relay so when the 12 volts comes on it starts a timer and after a set amount of time which you set with these little jumpers here then it will shut off this relay this relay will go over to this relay right here the, that controls the pump and it will turn the pump on and off so once again the sequence of events is when the car shut off it will it will apply 12 volts to this this will start the pump the pump will then time for a set amount of time probably a minute or so and then after it times out it will shut the pump off and it will stay off until you turn the car back on again when, when this relay will open up it'll drop the voltage to that and uh, reset everything so that when you shut the car back off again it starts this up runs the pump for a minute and then shuts off I hope that all makes sense um, I'll have a schematic diagram attached to to show you what I'm what I'm doing with the relays and uh, the wiring part of it and we'll get everything hooked up and see if it works okay everything's all hooked up now and it works great um, I'm going to give you a rundown of, of the wiring. So um, we'll start with this relay right here. The idea behind it is to provide power to the timer. Um, as you remember, this yellow wire here goes onto the back of the power control module to an orange wire that is ignition on. This goes to the one side of the coil of the relay. The other side of the coil of the relay goes to ground, which is, I got it hooked up right here. That'll go to the battery. So when the car is on, there is no power to the timer, which gets its power from the relay and ground okay the other the other side of the relay contact comes from plus 12 battery voltage that that's a direct line over here to the battery this there's a cable that runs through here and right to that point so when the car is running there's 12 volts to this relay which turns off 
the power to the timer. When the car shuts off, it puts 12 volts on the timer. When the timer comes on, it sends 12 volts from the, from the battery positive through the relay on, on the timer out through this connection down here, which was a fuse that provided power to the relay right there. Okay, so I took the fuse out and I've got, I made up a connector just like that that snaps in where the fuse was. That way I don't have to splice in anything. So that pulls in the relay. The relay, as you remember, I took the one lead off of the relay that basically provided a ground path and now it just hooks right to ground. So the power comes from the, the, the timer now instead of from the engine computer. The timer will time for whatever you got it set at. I, I have it almost two minutes by, use, by setting, changing that control or the, the jumpers you can adjust the time delay. But like I said I've got it set for about two minutes. So once again, the engine, the car, you cut, shut the car off, it puts power to the timer. The timer turns the pump on and starts timing. The pump runs for the two minutes that it's set, then it times out. When it times out, it shuts the pump off and will not start again until the power is interrupted to the timer and the way the power is interrupted to the timer is by turning the car back on again. Here's the schematic for what I have hooked up. You've got plus 12 coming from the car when the ignition is on. When the ignition is on it picks up the relay. The contact goes from 87A to 87 and nothing happens. Everything is is off. Okay? When you shut the car back off, the contact goes back to 87A, which puts 12 volts to the off delay relay. When the off delay relay when when that happens, the relay goes to this contact here and puts power on the pump and then the pump relay brings the pump in which is right there okay when the timer times out the, the relay contact goes back to the normally closed position drops the power off to the pump relay and shuts the pump off and the only way that you can start the off delay relay again is by cycling the power on your ignition. The next step is to take the two relays. I'm going to wrap the timer with some kind of plastic to help protect it. And then everything is going to go down. And you can't probably see it that well, but there's a lot of room in the bottom of this module and I'm going to stuff everything in there and put the cover back on and it'll be nice and dry and and that will be it. Okay, I took an old water bottle or not necessarily an old water bottle, but I took a water bottle and cut it up a little bit just to make a sleeve to, uh, to just to help protect everything, keep it from getting bumped around and and now I'm going to shove it all down underneath that underneath that power module. Okay, everything is all done and it's working just fine. Um, I might add one thing I might do later on if I find myself with the time is probably should get the pen to work, add a fuse 
right there to protect the 12 volts from the relay in case something happens with the relay and then add another fuse right here and that's going to protect the battery voltage that goes to the timer and to the the pump relay the fuel the uh, coolant pump relay and I'll just get a couple of inline fuses and split the wires that, that that provide the the power to that and put some fuses in just for a little added protection thanks for watching this video I hope you find it helpful uh, like I said I'll provide I'll provide a link to the the schematic diagram and uh, and some part numbers and and source for the delay timer and uh, that's it